Steve Bentley here, and today I'm going to show you how I put this snorkel in. I've been looking for a snorkel for a while. Did not want the snorkel that comes all the way down to the front here. And I understand why the fourth gens have that after putting this in. Anyways, it looks good. It's all come together. It was a lot of work. This was uh, like $80 on eBay. And I'm going to explain why it was inexpensive and what you need to do to get it to work for you. Um, a couple quick things that I've done. I'll show you as we go through it and the whole process. But there's the snorkel. I like the way it looks right now. Happy that I got that on. And stay tuned. We'll show you how we put that together. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've got this whole snorkel deal put together, there's a couple things I'm gonna tell you about, and I'm gonna go through it all as I'm building it out, or through the video as I'm putting it in. But a couple things, this is a really inexpensive snorkel. It's like 70 something, maybe $80 on eBay. Awesome, love that. And I don't mind if things don't really fit perfectly, that's cool, you know, if it's, what I'm looking for, which is, you know, a nice short base here. Yeah, I didn't like the look of the snorkels that go all the way across to the front. Hey, that's cool if you like that. I don't. And I was looking for something that was shorter. So this is a LC or Land Cruiser 100 snorkel. I didn't particularly like the top part here. So I put this cover on it. And I'm, my plan is for that to be something that protects the wind, uh, the rain from coming into this open snorkel here. I know some snorkels, which I don't like the look of, those big kind of periscope things that kind of hang down like that and the air intake is kind of underneath the top of it. I, I see that is a good uh, way of stopping the rain from getting in. I just did the same thing here by popping this little metal plate on and then putting some um, um, epoxy all around here and then once that had dried and hardened the metal plate onto the snorkel hitting it with some bondo or body filler and then spraying the whole thing with bed liner. Other thing I didn't like about this snorkel I still have to finish it a little bit more because it tipped over and I got a mark here and then I tried to brush it out and <laughs> didn't do a very good job. It has this word power in a space and then full and I think that looked kind of lame so I didn't want that on there so I body fillered over that, sanded it all out, and kind of got through into a bit of the lettering here, P-O-W-E. But I'm gonna re-spray that because I'm gonna sand this down because I didn't really like the way that turned out. And next time I've got a job, I've got a bed liner spray to do. I'll just cover the car up and spray this bottom part here, so that's okay. So you'll see as we go through the video, there's some things that you need to do in order for this to work. Number one, the template that goes here does not fit a fourth gen 4Runner at all. It is not even close, <laughs> it's so far off. So here's the part that I used, and I'll show you right here so you can figure that out. But I put this here and I made some measurements as to where this circle goes. And there's still work to be done when you do this. So eight and three quarter inches from this part here Right, so level along here, eight and three quarter inches from this seam here, two and a quarter inches from the top seam, and then the bottom of that circle is one inch above the fender liner, um, fender, not liner, fender flare, I guess. So that's where that circle is. The bolt holes that I had lined up, be careful as you're doing that, because if you're off just a little bit, like I think I had mine tilted a little bit like that, what that does, when you have it tilted like that, it makes this snorkel want to go that way. So I had to constantly, as I after I drilled these holes, and it obviously was off a little bit, I had to pull it back down. Now, they're adjustable because I drilled them a little bit bigger, so I probably could have loosened the bolts off and just cranked it down a little bit more. So you can do that. I didn't do that because I kind of wanted it to be snugged up tight to here. So I just kind of left it that way. But, you know, understand you can adjust them. It says 12 by 15 millimeters, so kind of oval. I just did 12 millimeters. 
and that gives you the, the room to wiggle. Up in here, and you're gonna see in the video, I just ended up taking the whole deal off because it was just so much easier to take the fender, the fender flare and then the, the fender liner, get that off and have it right out of the way. It's easier to work on drill and um, jack around with the hosing back up in here. So the other thing that you're gonna to need to do, there's a bracket in the back here that inside this snorkel, there's another piece of the snorkel that kind of connects through and it has the tube that runs forward to the air intake hose there. When you have that inside snorkel piece, it hits up against that bracket. So you have to cut the bracket out and bash it in. And then even still, I still had to cut the top of the inside part of that snorkel because it was still hitting up on that bracket. It was hitting the frame that the hood latches down onto. So a bunch of stuff that you need to do. If you're okay with doing that to get an $80 snorkel and you don't mind doing the work, it came together really well. It, I think it looks great. Um, it's exactly the look I was looking for. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna work. <laughs> we'll find out. I have not even used it yet for anything. I just finished putting it together. But I think it's um, I think it's worthwhile if you like doing things. If you don't and you don't mind that longer snorkel base look, the one that comes out here, there's a lot more room up here for any internal parts than there is back here. Maybe on a Land Cruiser 100, there's a lot of room back there. On this 4th Gen 4 Runner, there is not a lot of room back there where the internal part of the snorkel has to go. So if you don't mind the longer look and you want it to be as easy as possible, don't get this snorkel. <laughs> it's not good. You're not gonna have fun. I don't mind doing the work and I like the shorter look here. Um, it was a little frustrating jacking around with that frame in here and having to mess with it. But now that it's done, all that stuff's behind me so I don't worry too much about it. So anyways, hopefully that was useful information. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. Thanks for checking out the video and have a great day. Bye. It is another cold, rainy day here in Houston. I'm Canadian, but I've been here for six years now and I have lost my cold tolerance. <laughs> it's nasty. I think it's because it's so damp. Anyways, I can't wait. I am gonna get this snorkel on the Forerunner and I'm gonna cover up this logo. I'm gonna put some Bondo on it, sand it all smooth so that you can't see that. It's kind of goofy looking. And then I'm gonna Bedline spray the whole thing once it's all done. But right now I'm gonna cut the wind fairing into the shape of the snorkel. And I think just cut that little corner out there. And then my plan, because I'm tending to think this is gonna suck in a bunch of rain, I'm gonna put a little cap on top of it like that. Um, I don't think I can use this plastic, probably not. So I think what I'll do is you get some like 16 gauge steel, rivet it to the top here, um, put some JB Weld in there and sand it all smooth. Anyways, that's what I'm planning on doing right now. Uh, I wish it was a little warmer. And I think that's probably, might as well do that now because if I don't do that, I'm working on welding in some brackets for my solar panels that I want to put up there. But I think I'll work on a snorkel right now. Why well, just work on one project? Here we go. We've got a few threaded sleeves here. I'm thinking there's six of them, but I've got one, two, three, four holes in the base and three here. So there's one missing. these on and then we can start thinking about touching this to the A pillar and cutting a hole in the fender. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how this goes. That goes in. I guess that goes up under the, the door. It's 
itself and just screws up inside the A pillar there. And then it'll fit up in there like that. I'm guessing. Zero instructions on this thing. Which is fine. I think it's gonna go somewhere like that. I'm not gonna drill that in though until I get this fender hole drilled. Because this is more important, I'm thinking, to get that positioned properly. Two things I want to make sure that I get right is I want it inside the hood and above the door. Okay, here's my thought for this cover that I want to put on the top of the snorkel to keep the, any rain out if it's pouring out hard is just have this little kind of cowling on top and that's kind of the general size I'm going to make it. Okay, just like that. So we got a couple little score marks in there. There you go. So we've got a few compound cur cuts in here and curves, and that fits on there nicely. So I'm just deciding about the very end here. I kind of like it. Maybe, maybe round that off a little bit more. I think that'll be good. Okay, I like the way that looks. I'm going to mix up some JB Weld and just epoxy that right into place. I think that's gonna work perfectly for that. And then I'm gonna put some Bondo auto filler on here and just smooth that out. I don't particularly like the way that looks. So get that done and then I can start working on messing around with this fender a little bit more. Apparently there is a bolt up in here, up underneath here somewhere. I have to undo to get to the, the bottom part. It's probably in, in behind here. I'll pop these plugs out that I put in for this rubber um, after cutting the fender back a bit here. And then there's another one up in here and behind that plug there, I believe. This comes off. And there is a bolt in there. There it is. Right there, got to get him out. So, next steps. Let me get on that uh, snorkel first. I am a little low on JB Weld. Obviously, I need to get some more of that. However, I do have some of this. It's setting epoxy, so this will work. Actually, clean that first. So 
I'm gonna glue it down with this and then probably put some uh, body filler around it to do more of the actual smoothing out of it. Okay, let's take a look at how this worked out. I think it did okay. Oh yeah, nice. So that's, that's actually really hard already, so that's perfect. You can see, so when I spray coat that with the uh, liner, that'll cover that up nicely. I'll probably cover the screen, but yeah, it's good. Okay, I can actually get some body filler on top of that and that logo on the bottom and then I'll put that in over the next hour or so and then I can sand all that down pretty quickly. Get the, some Bondo spread out onto that and now I'm just hitting that logo on the bottom. Unfortunately, this stuff dries so fast. Within half an hour, it's ready to go. So, I got the body filler on and sanded it down. And that's, that, I don't think that's gonna come off or come show up when I put the spray bed liner coating on. Same thing here. I think that's going to be pretty good. This is going to drop down here somewhere. But that's how that top's going to fit in. Something like that. And I do think that little cover is going to be effective for dropping the rain off. If it isn't long enough, then I'll extend it a little bit, but I like the way it's looking so far. This turned out actually really nice. So this is the spray bed liner finish. I couldn't find my tripod. It's got to be somewhere close because I just had it. And just sprayed that on. Came out really nice. I like that. So I think that's going to be perfect. I'll let that dry and then I'll peel the tape off the inside and the, some of the bolt holes. And covered up the logo really nicely. And once that all dries and hardens, then I'll pop that up into the position. Taking the fender off. So, so far we've gotten this Phillips screw 10 mil head job here and then three 10 millimeter bolts two three and then a little plastic clip here got a 10 mil bolt this little guy here which was up underneath this plastic cover right there and now yeah there's another surprise 10 millimeter little bolt that goes right up inside here so you get that one out Let's put this one with this guy. Now we've got a bunch of them up underneath the wheel well here. And probably some up in here too. So they're, they're holding the front end of the fender on. But we've got to take these, these guys here out so I can pull that fender off. Because it seems to be, I got it attached to this liner here. And I'd ideally like to not have to take that liner off because these clips have wrecked two of them already. I'm trying to get it off. Um, so we'll see how that goes. What's going on up in here? I'm thinking. That one, potentially, and then this one up here with the headlight. 
Let me get those figured out. Okay, I'm pretty close. I ended up taking off the bolts that hold the headlight in. So I already had one from underneath, one here, and there's one under here, and one in behind here at the front. Underneath this little plastic cowling here, right back there, right there. And that's loosened up this. Looks like there's a little clip because that was kind of stuck earlier. Now, I still have a feeling like there's something underneath the front end here. Because I am not getting success with pulling this off. So there's the fender. So I have a bunch of room up in this area here, which is where the snorkel is going to go. But the problem, and I saw from the other day from looking up underneath here, is this thing. There's this bracket that's going to create an issue. Because the snorkel connection, this has to go up in here. And I think. I'm gonna to need to probably cut this section here in order to fit that in enough because that's pushing out about an inch. I'm thinking that's probably what I'm gonna end up having to do. Now I see why a lot of these snorkels have that extension that comes forward. I don't like that look. That's why I went with this one because it's stuck back here. But obviously the Land Cruiser LC100, which is what it was designed for, <laughs> has uh, probably a lot more room in this area. So I've got room. It's just this brackets in the way. And I'm sure the brackets there for a reason, but I'm gonna take it out. So. Let's get the bracket all taped up. I think I'm gonna bend it a little bit. It seems to be not exactly the angle I want. It's a little higher here than there so I'm gonna try and to torque it like that a bit that'll set it up flush to that. Let me see. Okay I just got some pliers and just cranked down on it to bring this up. at this fender line here. So I'm thinking if I do that, that I've got a lot of room there. And then that's gonna be as low as I can get it. It's still above the door, so that's good. And then as this moves in, the circle's gonna actually come up a little bit. So for me to mark the bottom of that hole, I think if I put it into this position here, so if that goes straight in, I'm gonna be above the fender. So really, I'm looking, okay, how high is that part of the cutout or the circle than that? Measure that up. So like to there, probably. Put a mark there and that should do it. So I'm going to tape that into place. And I'm thinking that's where I need to put the hole. I love it when this happens. So of course I did not measure what this actually was. It's not four inches. How is it? Did they have it in centimeters? Yeah, or millimeters. 114 millimeters. It's not four inches. It's 
four and a half inches. So, is it just that? It's too small. Hmm. I remember looking at them there and I was like, oh, is it four, four and an eighth, four and a quarter, four and a half? I think this was $21 and the four and a half one's 32. Uh, I really don't feel like going back to get it. And then, so this is a three inch elbow that I'm gonna put up in here. And I think that's big enough. I looked at the four inch one, that is massive. It's like, man, it can't be four inches. So let's pull this off and see what size elbow that is. Okay, so I'm not going to, get, I'll take this back, so I'm going to cut that out, the whole saw. Mark that off, I draw a mark with a circle, because once I start cutting, this paper is going to disintegrate and fall apart. I think what I'm going to do is cut just on the inside of it with my angle grinder and then sand out to the line. Sand to the outside of that line when I'm done. It's going to be a combination of this housing here. See, it doesn't fit. It's hanging, hanging off the body a little bit, just like it is on the A-pillar here. Because of that bracket. So I think that's how it's supposed to be. I actually might be able to get this a little closer by cutting the end of the bracket off and redrilling the holes so they come out a little bit more. So it gets a little tighter into there. I think that's what I'll do, try and do. But this looks good. I can open the door. Got lots of clearance here for the hood. So now it's fitting in that inner part of the snorkel into the fender and making sure I've got room there. I have these little holes that I need to drill still. So let me cut those out. These four holes there. Cut those, and those are 12 millimeter holes, I think. Yeah, so I'll cut, I'll drill those out with my step bit, and then I can attach the snorkel without it falling all over the place. So, I 
think I'm gonna be jacking with that uh, bracket. What I'll do is put the, I'm gonna, before I take this off, I'm gonna measure how much room I have to the right of that pipe, the end of that four inch pipe there, to the bracket, if I can get up in there somehow. And then take it off and measure the distance from here to here. And I don't think that's gonna fit. Okay, I think what's gonna make it infinitely easier for me is to take that whole fender liner out. So I'm gonna take the, the whole fender off and then take the fender liner out and then it's gonna be a lot easier for me to look up inside and figure out how I'm gonna fit this in perfectly rather than guess. So let's try and let's get that off. I've got a bunch of these black clips right here. One, two, three, four. And kind of hidden up in behind the... Oh, actually, that's the... Yeah, I gotta pop those off. So let me get those out if I can. That's just gonna make it a lot easier. It's never easy. Uh, okay, well, I decided to take the actual fender off. And hopefully I didn't destroy too many of these clips. And uh, I believe that's going to help me a lot. Actually, just at the back part of that bracket that's touching. Back up in here. In the back. Front's okay. But it's just that back part right back up in here. So I'm going to take a look at that and figure out where I need to cut that out. But that's good because then I can keep this part of the bracket here. My finger. This one here that's welded in, I won't have to take that off, so that'll support the front of that bracket. We put the bracket in the back and drew a little line around it, so I think I need to cut this part here out. And I'm going to cut up there to there. And opens this up a little bit more. Still stable here, still stable there. Just took out this little section here. Um, I'm hoping, actually I'm gonna hit, bash this in a little bit with a hammer, but I'm thinking this is gonna work. This is touching a little bit though. I think that needs to go in that half inch that I was talking about. So. Okay. 
And yeah, a little bit of work getting these brackets out that I made to support the solenoid. However, that's loosened. I was able to loosen <coughs> loosen the feet of the air hose there. And okay, so this is interesting. So there's a couple little holes there in the bottom, obviously, to catch water and let it drain out. So I'm going to keep those there. <coughs> for now, but that's good to know that they're, they're obviously not going to allow a lot of water in if we're going deep through stuff. But I want to be able to get this on here as deep into it as I can and then seal it up. I think I actually might be able to push it right to that collar. And that'll be my plan. And then whatever length I need to make that and then just duct tape the heck out of it all around there. Actually, probably do a silicone or TV on there as well. I think that's what I'll do. So um, I'm going to keep that. Just figure out what depth I need to make this. Okay, so that fits. I'm going to get some silicone on that. Okay, we got this in, and it's solid, and got a good amount of RTV silicone in there, and I've got a clamp, and you probably won't be able to see it, but I've got a clamp, hose clamp on the inside, and then that's all secured back in place, so that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to hit a bit of primer on the ends of these cut areas. Here's my plan. So I'm going to take this, because I can't get a couple, coupler thing. So I'm going to put some PVC cement on here. I'm going to cut this off, put a bit of it in there, into that elbow. And then on the other side, put the hose that's going to connect to the inside piece here. I'm going to put a clamp there and put a clamp on the other side. Because this clamp doesn't seem to be working very well. So I think I'm going to put some silicone in here and take that clamp off and put it on here, on this one. So that's the plan. So if you're getting, there is what's called a street elbow that has this reduced size on here, but it actually comes out too far. It comes out almost three quarters of an inch, so I don't think that would actually fit in there. So I'm going to cut this and glue that in and carry on. Wondering if just hitting it with some silicone all around here and wiggling this into place and maybe hitting it with a couple of self tapping screws. If that would work. Let's try that. Just have a couple of 
self tapping screws or metal screws I guess I don't know. Pop these in here. Looking good so far. I'm gonna to touch up this paint once this cures a little bit more. Next time I have to do some spray bed lining, I'm gonna just blast this little section here. I cut this bracket at the end and bent it a little so it's fitting better. Then I put a little bit of paint on it this morning so I'll let that dry. Then next steps now, I'm going to put a couple taps, screws up in through here up into the A-pillar, so I'll probably drill a hole there and one here. This is the old screw, but I don't like that location, so probably one up here and one here. Put that right up into the pillar. Then we've got the ducting hose, the vent hose. It's all done up. Pipe clamp thing so I can access it, so that's good. Get this one all lo locked in. Got room up here, so next step now, pushing this into place, getting these bolts in to location. So it's got to move in a bit, but for some reason it's jammed. What's going on up here? Feels like I've got space. Although... That might be a little tight at the top there. Against that bracket. Okay, I'm not happy about having to do this. However, I think it's gonna solve my problem. <clears throat> I know I'm gonna have to do a little repair on it, but I'm gonna chop the top corner here off this uh, inner cowling, because this is what's hitting right here. It's what's hitting the brace underneath the engine or the compartment here. So it's hitting up here somewhere. I think probably right here. So I think if I just knock off half an inch and then I'll just bondo and seal it up somehow and I think that'll work. Okay, so this is what I've done in order to get it to fit. So I just cut this whole corner off, probably almost an inch, and just angled it down to the base. So what I'm gonna do now is put a thin cap of plastic on that and epoxy cement it. And I got some epoxy here, a little two-part deal. And just mixing this together for a minute, as per the instructions. And I forgot to count. I think I'm in about 30 seconds. This hardens up in about 10 or 15 minutes, apparently, so we use this on the top of the snorkel. That's pretty solid, so I think I like this. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take this off and really get in there to sand it and make it look pretty, but is all kind of connected into the wheel here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit, set into place, and go do something else for a bit. So there's the finished product for the little seal. I think I've got that pretty well covered off all in through there. It sucks that I had to do this to it, but that looks like it's gonna work and gives me the clearance that I'm looking for. So pop that into place and hope it fits. Okay, fender is in place, fender liner is in place. Grab some of these, I don't know what they're called, fasteners. 
to replace some of the ones that I destroyed getting out. And now I'm gonna get that fender flare on. Let's see how this goes. Okay, we're gonna work on this now. It's on pretty good pressure, I think. Probably gonna put a hole here and one there, right up into that pillar. Touch this up at some point, but I couldn't get any lower here. I was not cutting into the fender, and then that's where I had the problem up the top here. But got it fitted, got it working, everything's back together again. Pretty happy.